Coming up tonight, Minister K. Shamugam discusses the issue of nurses wearing tudung in a meeting with Muslim leaders. Singapore and Malaysia agree to work towards recognising each other's vaccine certificates to facilitate cross-border travel in the future. They are all the rage these days. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey's first tweet sells for 2.9 million US dollars as a non-fungible token. This is the Straits Times News Night. I'm Dylan Ng. Good evening. I'm Chao Suen. Muslim leaders were told six months ago that the government is considering allowing nurses to wear the tudung at work. That's according to Home Affairs and Law Minister K. Shamugam, who was speaking at a dialogue with senior Muslim religious leaders today. His comments come two weeks after remarks in Parliament by two Malay Muslim ministers on the subject sparked a critical reaction among segments of the community. We can see good reasons why nurses should be allowed to wear tudung if they choose to do so. And I said this was being discussed internally. And after that, our view, there is likely to be a change. And we are also consulting with the community before we make a change. That is the government's position. Mr. Shamugam also told Muslim leaders that discussions with the community are ongoing and will take a few more months. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong will also meet community leaders. The government will announce the decision when discussions are completed. Now, if you're hoping to travel to Malaysia, you might just have something to look forward to. Singapore and Malaysia have agreed to work towards recognising each other's vaccine certificates to facilitate cross-border travel in the future and to allow cross-border travel on compassionate grounds in the coming months. In a meeting, the foreign ministers from both countries agreed to progressively restore cross-border travel for other groups of travellers in addition to the existing reciprocal green lane and the periodic commuting arrangement. In a joint statement, the two sides also vowed to continue to make progress on their respective national programs to vaccinate long-term residents, including Malaysians residing in Singapore and Singaporeans residing in Malaysia. Police are investigating Nian Polytechnic students for harassment in a suspected hazing ritual. In a video making the rounds online, a group of men in black t-shirts can be seen urinating on two naked men in a shower cubicle on the poly grounds. The two men were made to squat and face the wall. In a statement, the Polytechnic said that they have identified the students involved and are in the process of conducting an internal disciplinary inquiry. It added that investigations have revealed that the incident did not take place during our freshman orientation program or as preparations for this orientation program. In other news, $369,000 worth of electronic vaporizers and components have been seized by the Health Sciences Authority in the biggest seizure of its kind. Three suspects were caught during a raid where, con where officers confiscated thousands of e-vaporizers and e-vaporizer pods. If found guilty, they face a fine of up to $10,000 or jail for up to six months or both. In the Strait of Johor, off Woodlands, now sits one of the world's largest floating solar farms on seawater. It's capable of potentially offsetting more than 4,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide per year, equivalent to the greenhouse gas emissions from over 900 passenger vehicles a year. Hostel residents of some 13 units in North Tower of the National University of Singapore's University Town have undergone PCR tests after traces of COVID-19 were detected in the wastewater there. Affected residents have been told to remain indoors until the results are out, expected to be in two to three days' time. The Straits Times understands that most of the North Tower's residents are international and postgraduate students. An update on the COVID-19 situation here. 13 new cases were confirmed today. Now all 13 were imported and had been placed on stay-home notices upon arrival. There were no new infections in the community or from migrant workers' dormitories. Now let's take a look at what's making waves online today. Remember that digital-only artwork that fetched 93 million Singapore dollars just a couple of weeks ago? 
The purchase of the NFT or non-fungible token and its high price tag has raised many questions and gotten many people talking. Well, it's Singapore-based buyer Vignes Sundaresan who goes by the alter ego Meta Coven. Now he sat down with The Straits Time today to speak about life after coming out as the buyer of the record-breaking NFT and answers some of our pressing questions. Yeah, I'm not used to this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm finding finding it quite interesting. Uh, had people like walk up to me to, today in the morning and be like, "Are you, are you this guy in the, in the newspaper, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> After this new cycle, I'll go back to being Meta Coven, and and no one will remember Vignesh. And speaking of big bucks, it seems like paying fantastic sums for NFTs is the new craze. A Malaysia-based businessman has just paid $2.9 million for Twitter founder Jack Dorsey's first ever tweet as an NFT. The buyer, who is Sina Estavi, chief executive of technology firm Bridge Oracle, has likened the NFT to the painting of the Mona Lisa. Mr Estavi tweeted, This is not just a tweet. I think years later, people will realise the true value of this tweet, like the Mona Lisa painting. Looking for a sweet incentive to get vaccinated? Pity we're not in the US, because Krispy Kreme hopes to provide something special for Americans to get a COVID-19 shot. Customers who show a valid COVID-19 vaccination card at any outlet can receive a free original glazed donut every day for the rest of 2021. Yes, that's one free donut every single day through the end of the year. No purchase is required. And before we go, work from home might not be the new normal after all. Corporate giants the world over are assessing the best way to bring workers back into the office a year after the pandemic relocated offices into homes. Microsoft announced on Monday that it would begin allowing more workers back into its headquarters in Redmond, Washington, starting next week. And more companies are likely to follow suit. Just today, a survey by KPMG showed that most major global companies no longer plan to reduce their use of office space after the coronavirus pandemic. In fact, just 17% of chief executives plan to cut back on offices, down from 69% in the last survey in August. The survey, which covered 500 firms scattered across 11 countries, was conducted between January 29th and March 4th. Still thinking about the donuts. <laughs> and that wraps up the Straits Times News Night. Do visit straightstimes.com to see more news and videos. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the button below. Have a great evening and we'll see you tomorrow.